this is my canvas for today. And I gotta tell you, I'm a little bit nervous about this project, not only because all of these squares are very teeny tiny and I wanna paint a picture in each and every one of them, but also because this week I only have two days for this project. I have a lot of paintings that I have to start and deliver for work this week, so this is it. And if you're interested in seeing what my work as a professional artist is, I'm going to put my webpage here and my Instagram, and I'm of course going to link it below too. So yeah, that's the intro. I don't have much time, so let's get started. Now, the first thing I wanted to do was solve the cube, <laughs> not only because it triggered me for it to be scrambled up, I just could not paint on a side with different colors on it, but also because I thought if I ever scramble it once it's painted, how am I going to solve it if the pieces are not in the correct places? I honestly don't understand the Rubik's Cube algorithm or mechanism enough to know if this makes sense, but this is what I thought. I had to solve it and for that I follow a tutorial here on YouTube which I'll link below if you're interested and in any case it only took me two hours to unscramble it yay so here's the cube now solved and with a nice background ready to be painted um, back in my time the Rubik's Cube I had was completely black and the colors were stickers you could take out I know this because that's how we solved it before YouTube, <laughs> by moving the stickers. Anyhow, these are not stickers, they are plastic color inserts and I'm going to paint them. At first I wanted to paint the whole cube just like spray painting it, but I thought maybe the paint when dried it would keep it from moving correctly. And also at some point I decided I wanted to keep this black outline around every square because I felt it was iconic. So what I did was sand every individual square, I started with the red but then changed my mind and did the yellow because it's the one side on which I kind of knew what I wanted to paint. I sanded the yellow squares and then applied gesso to each and every one of them. I tried to clean the edges as best as I could with a q-tip and a moist towel. Once the gesso was dried, I went in with my mechanical pencil to draw a few of the ideas for yellow that I had come up with. You know what? Actually coming up with the ideas that I wanted to paint on the cube was the hardest part for me. The yellow was easier because I knew I wanted Pooh Bear there and someone on my Instagram stories quickly suggested to do a little bumblebee. So at least I had two squares for the yellow side. I started with Pooh, I drew it, painted it and did everything. I guess the first time you do something you always take longer because you need to figure things out. So this was definitely the color that took me the longest. And remember again how I said I didn't have time this week to do this? <laughs> My god. I didn't have time for this project this week. I never thought it would take this long. Between solving and the painting, I spent over 15 hours on the cube. I'm like really behind on stuff from work now. I think I spent two and a half hours on the first side alone, so I did not finish the cube on the first day that I had assigned for my YouTube play. In any case, because this brings me so much joy and I really wanted to show you a finished product, I carry on with the project regardless. Of course, as I gained experience, it was easier to paint on the cube, so the last side took a little over an hour. But this one, this one was long. Anyhow, continuing with my yellow side, the middle, I reserved for a Starbucks star. Then I drew a little fried egg. I also had a sunset, a balloon in the shape of a smiley face, a bird, which was suggested by Dreama on the community tab, and a little light bulb. It's just so funny for me to see this painted now because you wouldn't believe how long it took me to come up with the nine things to paint. Also, thank you Frankie for keeping me inspired and giving so many ideas on what to do with this cube. You rock. Thank you all for your suggestions. This was my process for the first side. I drew everything, then I painted the backgrounds, and then I went in with the Posca markers to do details. And uh, my 3M Poscas were really lifesavers in this project. I don't know if I have the patience or like even the skill set to do these tiny, tiny paintings with paintbrushes only. The good thing with the Poscas also was that in this really small surfaces, they don't dry up fast. So they stay wet enough so you can mix them and and that, I think, gives it a more painterly look. 
I brought in my micron pen to do the outlines and I wanted to keep them as thin as possible and that's why I used this pen. My Poscas were all too thick for this. When I had outlined everything, I did some finishing details and last but not least, I decided that instead of varnishing the whole cube with spray varnish, I would use clear nail polish on each square. I thought if I didn't protect every square as I finished, when I turned the cube to work on another side, the paint could get ruined. So, and also again, maybe the spray varnish would keep it from moving. So this is what I did. The next side was the red side, which I had already started to sand and I was about to put gesso on all of it. Before really starting, I did go back to the yellow side and fix some little things that I didn't like, like my Pooh Bear's face and the daisies. I thought it was nicer to have one yellow and one white. Back to the red, which I actually painted pink. I didn't want such bright colors. I wanted rainbow, but softer. I didn't know how I was gonna fill these nine little squares. I was kind of playing it by ear still. I thought about a strawberry, some hearts, a roast, and a rainbow, and I definitely wanted to have a rainbow there because Kalir's, Kalir, is that how you pronounce that? Suggested a rainbow. And she also has some very amazing ideas for a Wizard of Oz theme that I really want to do with something. Haven't thought about anything yet, but sounds colorful, glittery, and fun, so it's up there on my list. I did also add a ladybug, and I thought, okay, what else is pink? And I thought about a flamingo, so I tried to draw one of those, and you're gonna see that that became a no-no real fast. I think I lost so much time figuring out what to paint. I also painted a conversation heart, and I had an empty spot. So I started to detail a lot of the drawings, and that's when I decided that the flamingo had to go, and so did the rose and the ladybug. So I painted all over all of those, and then came back to it the next day. Yes. This is the next day because at this point I've already spent I think six or seven hours with my cube and all I had to show for it was one side finished. So I came back and I had a better idea of what I wanted to draw. I spent the night using my sketchbook. I wanted to have a Care Bear and then a little pig and some cherries and I decided to keep the ladybug but I just wanted to draw it differently. So I started again drawing and painting everything and I regretted the Care Bear so I covered it and continued with the details. When everything was dry enough to paint, I tried to do the conversation heart letters with the Posca, but that did not work at all. So I brought out my teeniest, tiniest, teeny tiny paintbrush. This is the smallest paintbrush I own. Look how small it is next to my nail. Anyhow, it was still a struggle to write with it, so I don't know if I'm really built for tiny detailed painting. I don't think I am. <laughs> I don't think I have the emotional skills or the like skill skills to do it. It takes a lot. It's really hard. I admire people who do this even more now. Anyhow, changed the ladybug a bit because I wanted it to be more like a character. And then I decided to do a cute little mushroom in the middle where I had nothing. I added lots of details and again varnished this side. Next color is the side which I had already sanded, so I just needed to add the gesso and a mixture of baby blue. While that dry, I sanded the orange side, and because it hadn't dried yet, I also sanded the green side and added gesso to the orange side. Once the blue was dried, I was happy because I knew exactly what I was going to draw in each one of these nine squares. Here's my sketchbook to show you how I thought about this last night and I was starting with this color and I was very excited. What I wanted to have on this side was a little cloud with raindrops, an evil eye for protection, a hot air balloon, a little ocean with a paper boat, a jellyfish, a whale, a little piece of earth, a blue flower which I now forget what the name of it is. Oh, I don't remember. And last but not least, a little moon with a star. This time it was a speedier process just because I could go in and draw everything and move from square to square, changing color, not thinking about everything that much. So that was great. It was a lot of details, but again, it just moved faster. I knew exactly what I was doing for each square. So at the end, I just had to line everything up and add some personality to the characters and the will. And then I just varnished it. I think it's really cute. I love this side. And also picking up the speed for this project raised my spirits. <laughs> I was afraid I was not gonna have a finished cube after all of this. And because the editing also takes so long and I could see how many hours I was filming, 
I think uh, the editing takes me probably three times as long as the painting does. Anyhow, so many hours of footage. With the blue side done faster, I was encouraged to keep going. I don't recommend doing this in two days like I did, or even like a day, that was crazy. Your eyesight gets tired, it's just a lot of tiny details. I think you would probably enjoy it more if you took like a long time with it and like drink some tea, watch a series, listen to some podcasts and just, you know, enjoy it because it is a beautiful project that I actually love doing it. I just don't want to put this type of time pressure on myself. And maybe if I did a second one, I'll probably approach it differently. Instead of nine tiny paintings, maybe I would do like a whole painting in the side and each square just complements that painting. I don't know if I explained that well. The orange side got the same treatment, sanding, gesso, and now a layer of custom orange paint. And I think I got messier with the painting the squares because I was tired as I moved forward. And as the orange paint dried, I of course attended to the green side to save some time. Once the orange was dry enough, I started drawing my things. And for this one, I decided to do a little baby dog, a goldfish, a fall leaf, a little peach. I know that looks like a heart, but it's a peach, a popsicle and an orange, of course, a tiger. And then I couldn't really choose the two that were left. So I started coloring everything. Once I started coloring the peach, which is supposed to look like the emoji peach, I saw two other emojis. So I decided to paint a fire and a little carrot. With everything painted, I quickly moved on to details. And for my carrot, I added a tiny bunny holding it. And then, you know, just the same process, outline everything and added character to the creatures with eyes, cheeks, mouths. And finally, a layer of nail polish. On to the next side, which is already gessoed. And that's the green side. Mix some cute little green color that I like better than the original color and painted all of my squares. While that dry, I sanded the last side and I don't know why it hurt me to send the Rubik's logo. But too late now, it's sanded and of course I added gesso and that was it because the green was dry. Again with my green side straight to drawing everything because I knew what I wanted. A hummingbird, a little frog which has wings, don't ask me why, a clover, a cactus, an avocado, two peas in a pot, a green apple, and another little character here. I want you to try to guess what that is because this one, he's not green. And finally, a little turtle. Again, I just went in with my markers and added all of the solid colors with green. And then of course I had to paint this creature, which is white. Can you know, can you tell what it is yet? <laughs> if you've ever seen my content before, maybe you already know what it is because I love this animal. Anyhow, outline everything and then it was time to work on the panda bear. <laughs> and I thought it would be appropriate to have it on the green because he has a green background, which, you know, could be bamboo trees. I don't know. <laughs> but mostly because I wanted a panda somewhere. I love panda bears. Okay, so I was done with the green side and could finally do the last one. Yay! <laughs> I was so tired. <laughs> For the last side, I didn't want to keep it white, so I painted it with purple, mostly to have the six colors of the rainbow on the cube. For this one, I also knew exactly what I wanted to do on every one of the nine squares. And it's going to seem a little random. I don't know why I chose these things, maybe because Halloween just passed like a month ago, but I chose a planet. And then for the second one, I wanted to do a little skull, you know, purple, Halloween, I don't know. I also had a butterfly, which was an option for many colors, but ended up being here. A nocturnal animal, an owl. Uh, I wanted to do a little heart and ice cream because I love ice cream and it was missing from the cube as well. And then I did a bat, which is also Halloween, nocturnal, I don't know. And then a cat and some crystals. Again, I just put down all of the base colors with the Boscas and after I had everything looking purple, I started to do details. When I started doing details, I figured that I could use my glittery Poscas for the crystals. I only have three of these Poscas, but still. And I thought I should have added glitter to this project. It would have been amazing. But too late now, I'm too tired to even try it in one square. But imagine a cube with every side with some glitter. That would be amazing. In any case, followed my process, outlined everything, gave everything cute details, and I even gave the ice cream a face. While that dry, I started to apply polish to the squares that were finished. And as I fixed the owl's beak, 
I noticed that every square where I put the polish was changing color. <laughs> This was really weird because all of the previous colors had not done that and now the purple looks like my background Which is like a speckled fuchsia background. I don't know You can see all of the other sides are fine. None of the colors changed So I don't know what the deal was with this But I embraced it because it looked good and it still looks different enough from the pink And with that I called this cube done Finally here are all six sides and colors and I'm really happy with the result. Do you have a favorite side? Please let me know which color you like most. I think it looks beautiful, it's so playful, it has a lot of things that are special to me and I really really love this project so much. I would not do it in such little time next time but I did enjoy doing it and I'm glad I took the extra day because I think it looks beautiful. Now the question is, should I scramble it again and play with it or not? Let me know. I hope you enjoyed looking at me push through these 54 tiny tiny little canvases and seeing my finished cube. If you have any suggestions of what I can paint on next, please comment below. As always, thank you so much for watching, especially if you watch all the way here to the end. And if you did, please let me know that you did by commenting with the rainbow emoji so I can thank you personally. It will be our little secret because I guess most people won't know. With that, I leave you. Have the most wonderful day. Bye!